Hey there YouTube, this is Michael with Michael Mays Leatherworks and today I want to continue my video series on skiving leather. In my last video uh, we spoke about a Japanese skiver and I demonstrated a uh, technique for using it to manually skive your leather projects. Now that uh, video was fairly popular, um, it's received a lot of views and comments. Um, so when I was contacted by Steve Miller of Harrison Forge to uh, talk about uh, this English, it's a bookbinder's skiving knife, is the style that he said that this is modeled after. Uh, so, you know, he had watched my previous video, said he enjoyed it, asked me if I would give this uh, style knife a test. Um, he's making these, wants to see if they're viable. I said, sure, man, you know, send one to me. Um, I'll give it uh, an honest review. So uh, what we're going to do today is run it through its paces, um, see how well it cuts the leather, uh, skives the leather, uh, how easy it is to control. Um you know, because uh, if it's a skiving knife, it's got a skive, right? Now, as you can see, uh, it is fairly thin here. The profile, it looks like it's maybe about an eighth of an inch. We're looking at a seven inch uh, overall length. Looks like we're at seven eighths uh, width. So, uh, it's very lightweight. Now, even with it being thin, you can see it um, doesn't really have any flex to it, so um, it's solid. Uh, blade definitely feels like it's uh, got a good edge on it, feels sharp. Uh, so what we're going to do today is I've got some 7 to 9 ounce uh, leather here. Um, I've got some uh, felt from uh, Weaver Leather. Uh, it's a liner felt. Um, and then I've got a little bit of 12 to 14 ounce leather uh, that I'd like to test this on. So uh, what we're going to do is just start with the thinner leather first. Uh, let's see how well it cuts. Now this is, like I said, this is 7 to 9 ounce. Let me get a, uh, my wife threw out my scrap bag when we moved, so I don't have a lot of scraps right now. But what we're going to do is I want to see how well we can do a push cut with this. Now, it is very sharp. Now, there very little pressure was needed to actually um, get that cut. Okay, let's see if I've got a little bit of a bigger piece, yeah. I'm noticing something here. Okay, now as you can see, like I said, this is seven to nine ounce. It's so sharp, I'm literally able to use it as a bubbler. Uh, I mean, it, it peeled that, that corner right off. So if we were to turn that around and do the back side. It wasn't clean of a cut on that side, and I can tell you why. What I've noticed by cutting there on it, and you see here coming down, it's a perfect 90 degree. And then, but here... When we get to the back of the blade, you notice it curves right here. That curve is giving me problems. Um, I think if we had a sharper 90 degree here, um, like we see on the Japanese type knives, it would be easier to control because what I'm seeing is that, that uh, side where it's rounded off, it wants to wonder. So it's making it harder to keep that edge 
to keep that line here nice and even coming up. Um, it, it wants to it wants to wiggle on me. That's that's the best uh, way I can describe it. <clears throat> like I said, the blade does feel very sharp. I mean, it, it's cutting through it very easily with little little effort. But that back end when I'm going to push, it, it's wanting to wonder, and that's leaving this line here crooked and uh, you know uneven. So that's that's definitely one little design flaw uh, that I can see is this curved edge here. That needs to be uh, more of a 90 degree uh, on both sides. And that's going to lend to better control. Okay. So we're going to try this uh, felt material. If you guys have ever cut this, you know it can be a pain in the butt. Uh, this stuff likes to stretch when you cut it. Uh, if you're using a craft knife or something, you'll think it's cut perfectly, but then you'll remove your straight edge. It'll look curved like this instead of straight the way you want it. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use our ruler for a straight edge. Always cut away from yourself. Make sure your fingers aren't over the edge of your ruler. Now I'm not trying to do this in one go. I'm just going to do a couple passes over it. Pull it. Okay. So let's see. We'll set this against the line here. Let's see, let's see what we get. I mean, that looks fairly straight to me. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's sitting right against the uh, ruler. I don't see it bowed out anywhere. Um, so yeah, I mean, that looks like a nice straight cut. So that blade uh, is definitely sharp enough to cut this without pulling it and stretching it and deforming it. So there's no doubt in my mind, the blade is very sharp, okay? Um, do have two uh, critiques on it though, uh, just from what I've done so far. Um, and this is this is what I'm seeing. Like I said, number one, this curve here um, is making it harder control on on, on a pull cut when I'm trying to uh, to set that initial cut for my scov. Um, this is making it wonder. And also, when I go to to do that cross cut, you know, where I'm holding it like this and coming across. Um, I don't have a lot of room here to, to put my fingers. There's not a lot of real estate here because this is only seven eighths of an inch wide. I feel if this was slightly wider to where I could get two full fingers on the, on the blade, um, that's going to allow for better control. Uh, cause I am, I am feeling it in my fingers, um, because where this is so thin, um, and, and, and only seven eighths of an inch wide, you're having to grip this very hard um, to make sure that you retain control of the blade at all times. Um, that is going to fatigue your fingers over a period of time, I feel. Now, here I've got just some scrap that uh, this was a cut off when I was doing a straight cut uh, for some belts that I was making. So this is some 12 to 14 ounce veg tan. You can see she's very thick. I mean, that's rocking a quarter inch at least, you know, so. All right, so let's see. Do the same thing. I'm going to start off with just doing a uh, push cut here. On the thicker leather, it was a little bit easier uh, to do that push cut to take that bevel off there. Um, just because you've got the leather is a lot stiffer, so it's easier to hold that angle. So as you can see on this thicker leather, those push cuts, th those are very effective. I mean, look at that. I set that down at a steeper angle 
Now it's not perfect. You see a little waving right here, but of course with any tool, there's going to be a period of adjustment on learning how to use it properly. Uh, again, though, I do feel if it was a little bit wider, I could have more control by the pressure I'm putting on the blade with my fingers here. Cause see, I'm having to overlap them. And so I'm not able to put what I feel like, you know, even pressure down on the blade. As you can see, even that thick veg tan, I mean, it's cutting through it like butter. But the, uh, like I said, for me, con controlling that, I believe would be easier with, with a slightly wider blade and by giving us a 90 degree here on this edge. Now, overall, um, is it, is it effective tool? I would say yes. Uh, I think the, the value of it is definitely there. Um, it's clean. Like I said, it does feel good in the hand as far as it's highly polished. There's no burrs. Um, the length I think is fine. Seven inches I think is fine for that. Um, but where it's so thin uh, and so lightweight, I, I need some a little more meat to be able to actually hold it better to control, you know, the the stroke of the blade. Um, I, I do believe if, if those two things there were uh, were taken into account, uh, I do believe this would be a very uh, useful knife to have in your kit. Uh, I think on the the push cuts. I think are definitely its strength um, is, is that push cut there. But again, this this rounded edge is causing that to wander on. The, the blade profile is, is really good. It's super sharp. Overall, I like it. Um, as is, I don't think I would use this very much just because of the strain it puts on my fingers. I do like how it cuts. Um, overall, I think it's a good quality, a well-built tool, but for bigger hands or for extended periods of use, uh, as it stands right now, uh, I wouldn't recommend it for that. So as it stands, uh, I'd give it a B. Um, the functionality is there. I just think it needs a little, little bit more refinement. But again, uh, I do want to thank Steve, Steve Miller of Harrison Forge. Uh, for sending me the blade to uh, do this uh, review video on. Um, if you guys are interested in speaking with Steve on having a blade made, um, his contact details will be in the description below. As always, I thank you for taking the time to watch my video today. Um, love for you guys to take the time to leave a comment and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Guys, I want you to be on the lookout for more videos to come. Thanks, y'all.